Welcome to the ABI Snapshot, where we spotlight key findings from our team of analysts. Today, you're speaking with me, Ryan Martin, Senior Research Director at ABI Research, and Kiko Nakano, VP of Marketing at Paladine AI. Welcome, Kiko. Hi, Ryan. Thanks for having me. Excited to have you here. Our research tells us that the number of robots in factories will more than double in the next five years. And at the same time, about 90% of companies feel they don't have staff which has the skills to deploy and use these new solutions. And this is especially true for robotics automation programming, or at least it was before AI. Yeah, we're, we're hearing that a lot in the field as well. And we feel that AI will help change the game in several very important ways. First is AI will help remove kind of the barrier of doing heavy coding when you're needing to make a modification to your existing automation workflow. Today, traditional systems are typically rigidly programmed to do one or two very repetitive tasks. So let's say you want to add a new component to your automation or make a small tweak. Uh, you typically, if you're, especially if you're resource strapped, you typically have to go back to your system integrator to get that done or an engineering firm. Um, and that can be costly. So what AI can do in that sense is to provide a really low code, easy to use, user interface that helps take that difficulty out of the way, takes that barrier away, and um, helps you kind of train your robots in a way that even your frontline workers can do that task. You don't need to uh, reach out to a system integrator. And that's really uh, powerful because it helps not only reduce downtime, but also brings your frontline worker into the mix and helping you roll out autonomy. I love that. When I think about AI too, it, the human component is also really important. And to think about the role of humans in AI, AI won't replace people largely, but it's actually intended to make their work better. And so we think about the AI in the context of automation, I break it down into four phases. The first phase, there really isn't any automation. It's kind of the human is the loop. And the loop is a system of automation. Example is bread making. Take a piece um, uncooked bread and you put it in the oven. Fully manual, at least in some context for a baker. Then you have a human in the loop. And that's where a lot of companies are today. And the role of the human in that scenario is to validate each task. So something is not happening until a person says, yes, this is good, or no, it's not. Then you have a human on the loop. So the automation system is set up such that the role of the person is to monitor what is going on. You don't need to validate every step for some kind of action to occur. And then finally, you have a human out of the loop. And this is kind of the panacea of true adaptable automation where a human or a person is involved only to intervene if something goes wrong. Tika, what do you think about these phases? I think we see the evolution happening uh, for AI and robotics in that manner as well. And I'd add that there's really no one or one is better than the other. It's, it depends on your organization and it's really more of a framework to help you measure and manage your overall uh, automation and implementation journey. So just to put it in the context of, of a real world um, use case, let's take surface prep, um, surface preparation, things like grinding and sanding, which are critical aspects of many industrial uh, applications today, whether you're in general manufacturing or in an MRO um, type of operation. These, uh, these tasks are typically very labor intensive um, and have high levels of complexity and variability, which makes it difficult to automate that process. So what AI does to help you in that sense is to fill the gap, first by bringing in a, the robots to help take what's dirty, demanding, and sometimes dangerous, those tasks and having the robots do them and in that case, the human could be elevated such that they're really playing more of a supervisory or monitoring role. So if you break it down in the context of the, the autonomy level that you were referring before, in a human in the loop context for surface prep, let's say you are sanding something and uh, that person would then be in the work cell and actually monitoring and making sure that that task is being done correctly. Um, they would do a visual validation, most likely, to say, yes, that task is done correctly and it's ready now to move to the next phase. In a human on the loop scenario, if that human now takes a step back, is in that supervisor or monitoring role, and they're really only brought in to intervene if there's an exception case, something went wrong, something of that nature. Um, so 
How that evolution occurs or what level of autonomy you implement really depends on what your organization's needs are. But the beauty of using AI to do that is that it puts the flexibility of doing that however you want to do that in your hands. I really especially like those examples because what what comes through strongly with AI is that automation becomes applicable to a broader set of tasks and scenarios where previously it wasn't thought to be relevant. Scenarios that are either too complex, too costly, or maybe folks don't have the what are thought to be the necessary skills to implement automation. Kiko, what are some best practices for these implementations that you're sharing here? Yeah, I think first and foremost, it's really important to identify your core um, issue or pain point so you can measure success and even sell in your idea of automation to the rest of the organization. And like we talked about earlier, how much autonomy you bring to the table up front uh, at the beginning could totally evolve. And that's okay. But the key, I think, is really to start small and do just a couple of uh, deployments first to really prove out your business case and show that this is working or to figure out what the right level of autonomy could be. Um, and once you have that down, then that's time to scale. And that could be additional use cases or bringing in new stakeholder groups or additional facilities. Really, the choice is up to you. Thanks so much, Kiko. Really good points and insight. For a deeper dive into our conversation today, we have a full report that I would encourage you to check out. AI-enabled robotics software for manufacturing automation use cases, speeding time to value.